Welcome, welcome, welcome. That's right, in this video, we're gonna talk about how John Oliver just exposed the real cause of the opioid crisis in the United States. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is pull different topics from pop culture or the news to try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So I just finished watching John Oliver last week tonight. Love that show, love it so much. And whenever they're talking about opioids, ooh, I get all worked up. So those of you who don't know me yet, uh, hi, I'm Chris. I am a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. I've been clean since June 23rd, 2012. So a little over six and a half years. And my drug of choice was prescription opioids, okay? So this is something I'm very passionate about. It's something that almost took my life. Working in a treatment center for over three years, I've seen how it's affected so many people all over the country and I've seen how many people have passed away from addiction because of prescription opioids. So in this video, I'm gonna break down some of the things that John Oliver talked about, share some of my own personal experience, as well as some broader information about this. And it's all gonna lead back to where we're at with the opioid crisis, talking about some of the things that President Trump's talked about and how those aren't necessarily the solutions, all right? So in this week's episode of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, they start out by talking about McKesson, okay? So they're talking about how the opioid crisis is largely fueled by a bunch of pharmacies ordering way too many opioids and like selling them all willy-nilly, all right? These are sometimes known as pill farms. So the example they used was a small town in West Virginia with a population of 400 and they ordered over 3 million prescription opioids, okay? That was enough to give every person there about 7,500 opioids, okay? So think about that for a second. And I'm gonna circle back to this in a minute. But anyways, what they talk about, how McKesson, all they did was like they made it so they had to regulate themselves and keep an eye on themselves, which is absolutely bonkers, all right? So one of the things that a DE, uh, former DEA agent was discussing is they shouldn't be fined, right? Because a fine is just a slap on the wrist. These guys are making insane amounts of money off the backs of people who are becoming addicted and dying from this disease. Like, these are people who should be put in prison for what they're doing, all right? So John Oliver ends up going into the Sackler family. And the Sackler family, oh, they get my blood boiling. But one thing about John Oliver and the team of last week tonight is they lighten up the mood a little bit. So what they did was they got various actors to read parts of this deposition with the Sackler family, or uh, I believe it was Richard Sackler, and I chose to use a couple clips from one of my favorites, Brian Cranston, who you may know as Walter White. So here's a few things pulled from that deposition. The launch of Oxycontin tablets will be followed by a blizzard of prescriptions that will bury the competition. The prescription blizzard will be so deep, dense, and white. And then don't forget this one. We have to hammer on the abusers in every way possible. They are the culprits and the problem. They are reckless criminals. All right, so this is absolutely terrible. For those of you who don't know the full history about this, when Oxycontin first came out, they marketed it as a safer, non-addictive opioid, okay? They said, this is safe to use, use this and all this, and they were pushing it like crazy. And they were lying to doctors, lying to the public. They had a very, very aggressive marketing campaign. And by the way, I'm gonna link to uh, the Sackler Gallery uh, com website that John Oliver created and last week tonight created. Um, it's great, go watch it. A little humor for this terrible situation. But anyways, like they aggressively push this and so many people, so many people, even people who were part of their marketing campaigns and uh, the commercials they were doing, they ended up becoming addicted and dying. I think only a few, a few people survived, right? Um, some of them became addicted to heroin and ended up getting clean, but a lot of them ended up passing away from this. So that one clip I just showed you that Brian Cranston read, like that absolutely sickens me, okay? like. 
their their whole idea behind this, and he said other awful things like, oh, we, oh only 50 something people died? That's not too bad. But anyways, their whole um, campaign to like kind of uh, sweep this under the rug was they wanted to get ahead of this thing and blame the addicts. Blame the addicts for this. So here's the thing, here's the thing, okay? I have a science of addiction course up on my website for free if you wanna go check it out. It's linked down in the description below. But yes, some people are born addicted, some people develop an addiction from substance abuse, but when doctors are pushing and overprescribing addictive medications, there are chemical hooks, okay? And then some people are more prone to addiction, all right? Science has discovered this. Some people's genetics, their brain chemistry is different than the average person, so they are more prone to addiction. For example, addiction runs in my family. There's actually a gene associated with addiction, okay? So we need to understand that they were creating addicts and then they wanted to blame the addicts. And John Oliver makes a joke about how like, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're trying to blame the people who are filling their pockets with money. So here's where this thing comes full circle, back to where we're at today, okay? Because this is something that got kicked off in the, like the early 2000s. Now the Sackler family is paying for it and all sorts of things. But here's the issue that I have. Here's the biggest issue I have, is the way that President Trump keeps talking about building a wall because Mexico keeps bringing drugs into our country. Like this is complete BS, okay? There are so many politicians who are taking money from big pharma and the best way for people not to look at that is to blame Mexico and say, oh, well, Mexico's bringing heroin in. Here's the thing. On the screen right in front of you, this is a report from drugabuse.gov, all right? Most people who turn to heroin started with prescription opioids, all right? Not many people wake up and they're like, ugh. You know what? I'm gonna try heroin today. That's not how this happens. Most people start with prescription opioids. So that wall, that wall that they're so adamant about to keep drugs out, immigration's a totally different thing that I don't talk about on my channel, but one of the selling points that Donald Trump keeps trying to give is that the drugs are coming over. And here's the thing. Here is the other thing that upsets me, all right? And let me make it very, very clear. Like, yes, there are people with chronic pain, and yes, that is awful and like I can't even imagine, but we need to figure out a way to come together because whenever I talk about this prescription opioid epidemic, chronic pain patients think that, you know, I'm talking about just getting rid of prescription opioids. That's not what I'm talking about, but we're talking about regulating them. We're talking about uh, making it harder to access. And like, I'm sorry, but there are very bad doctors out there who are pushing this. Remember that small town of Kermit that I talked about? over ordering prescription opioids and then selling them to the public because here's the thing like here in nevada they've cracked down quite a bit on it so like for example chronic pain patients they'll have to go back to the doctor um like maybe once a month like they're not giving people 90-day prescriptions anymore they go back once once a month and then they might even have to do a drug test why do a drug test do you ask right and I remember there was an article in the Las Vegas Review Journal about this woman they quoted, and they're saying, oh, and they're drug testing me like I'm some sort of drug addict? No, here's the thing, and like the most ridiculous argument I ever hear is like when people are like, oh, doctors weren't giving them to me. I was buying prescription opioids on the street. How do you think people get those prescription opioids, okay? I was a prescription opioid addict, and 99.9% .9 of my dealers were like, older men and women, okay? What they were doing was going to the doctor, lying about their pain, getting a bunch of pills, and then selling them to guys like me, as well as many other people's. So this is one of the reasons why doctors are starting a drug test to make sure that people are actually taking the pills that they're being prescribed, because there's a lot of people gaming the system in order to sell drugs to other people. And this creates a dependency. This is why people turn to heroin. I can tell you from my own experience, I, I was addicted to prescription opioids without prescriptions. So when my dealers would run out, I would go through withdrawal. I was in a lot of pain. I'm one of the few fortunate people who had a very severe opioid addiction to prescription opioids, and I never turned to heroin. And like, I was probably this close, this close. Heroin was cheaper, and it was stronger, 
and it was more res readily available, all right? So we need to understand how this thing escalates. So like, I really, really hope that all of you are getting the correct information and you're thinking about this. I've been doing some more videos on like politics and things like that. Like we need to understand where the sources of these problems are coming from. The drugs, yes. Like fentanyl coming in from China, yes, that's a big issue. Black tar heroin coming in from Mexico, yes, that's a big issue. But we need to start getting down to the root problem and figuring out why people are turning to heroin, why people are turning to fentanyl, why are people doing this? A lot of it starts with a prescription opioid crisis that is coming from doctors, coming from pharmacies right here in the United States, all right? So let's all come together and figure this thing out, all right? Whew. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this together, all right? Anyways, that's all I got for this video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to sign up, become a patron, help support the channel, get involved in our monthly Q&A and some other stuff, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.